Hey folks, it's E Chip and Robber. <laughs> hey folks, it's E Chip and Robber. Quit now. Why can't I be silly like that? Just do it. <laughs> hey folks, it's E Chip and, and Robber. You talked over me that time. <laughs> hey folks, it's E Chip and Robber. <laughs> what? I was Robert. smiling. Oh, <laughs> Hey folks, it's E Chip and Robert, and uh, we live in an off-grid uh, situation in the Intermountain West, and we are working on getting to be able to build a uh, sustainable home made out of uh, straw bale and adobe. So in the meantime, in order for us to be able to live here without having to work harder, not smarter, we've had to kind of update the shouse and add some amenities and things like that. Yeah, we're trying to get the shouse to a point where uh, it serves us so that we can move on and do other things uh, toward the development of our land, building our permanent home, you know, things like that. Because the last thing we want to do is spend the day working you know, say on the house or on the land or something like that, and then come in here and have to work just to take care of ourselves. So, you know, we've tried to make ourselves comfortable by installing electricity, running running, running hot and cold water, you know, being able to take a bath uh, normally and, and those kinds of things. Updating the compost toilet to where it's actually inside the container that we wanted to put it in instead of it just being a bucket. Um, so this is an update video just to let you know where we're at. You may remember in a prior video uh, where I worked on an old <laughs> garden tiller that we got for free. I put a new carburetor on it and it was smoking. Well, we've got that finished up and running. And we got the new carburetor put on, and we got the gap set on the timing and uh, for the magneto. And we ordered the pulley, which I've got over there, uh, stuff like that. And you remember we started it up and started blowing oil all over the place. There was oil coming out of the carburetor. Here, here I think is the culprit right here, this breather. This is known as a breather plate. When this engine's running, uh, you know, compression causes what's known as blow by a little bit of gas, uh, not gas, uh, not gasoline, but exhaust gases and things like that blow by the, the um, piston rings and it builds up pressure in the crankcase. And so <clears throat> that needs to be ventilated to prevent damage. And the way it's ventilated is through this. This is basically a little flat leaf shaped valve that you know opens when it needs to when the when the pressure in the crankcase gets bent and it feeds out this port through this tube and into the carburetor so let's see if this is the problem i mean we had a lot of smoke coming out because obviously oil's getting blown through here and then into the carburetor and then into the cylinder and that's why we had a lot of smoke coming out of the exhaust but we also had a lot of oil just getting blown right out of this thing so let's put it back together see what we get This thing is really screaming when it's running and it tends to kick this uh, pull start uh, assembly back out. Whatever is happening is happening behind this grate. Okay, it was just squealing way too much. Uh, you can see the rust in here. These are the points. You know, we don't need this stuff in here anymore. And the reason it's rusted is because when they switched over to electronic ignition, they just you know, left that wire sitting there like that and didn't close it up with a little um, silicone or something like that to seal that out. So it, it got rusted. All right, so we got the ratchet assembly back on. Got our good old business card here to <laughs> set our distance for the... Now see, I think it's not as noisy as it was, but I don't know if that's the problem. We'll see. Still using a lot of oil. But it stopped squealing. We might have fixed that problem.
good. That's the nice thing about an electronic ignition. With an electronic ignition, when you shut the throttle down all the way, it's supposed to kill the engine. So, um, not like the old point system where you had to use this kill switch. But, it's nice to know the kill switch is there in case you need it. So, all right, get the shroud back on this thing and use this puppy. It's going to use oil. I can tell that. It's, it's uh, throwing smoke out. And maybe as we run it more and more, that condition may help a little bit, may clean up the uh, cylinder wall in there and may help with that a little bit. But, you know, even if it doesn't, guys, uh, it was a free machine and I, I got a total of 80 bucks in it. So that's cheaper than renting one for a day. We've also finished the kitchen area, which I'm super grateful for. We have cabinetry, a butcher block cook, uh, a butcher block countertop. We're going to be installing um, a propane cook top and things like that. But I'm so very grateful for having the, the workspace and the areas to be able to actually cut my uh, vegetables up and, and do my production part of you know, making a meal. Yeah, I mean, the, the kitchen was usable, but not really. Uh, you know, there used to be an old plastic table back there that we had our camp stove on. and there was, sagging in the middle. And there was nothing here. <clears throat> and uh, so it really helps to have mm -hmm. the cabinetry and the countertops in. Mm -hmm. We were able to put in all of the boxes of things that we had left, um, boxes of dry goods, um, cleaning products, all are up underneath the cabinets. And it's kind of opened up the area, even though the cabinets are more, they're larger than what we had in here before. It really kind of, it gives it a more homey appearance and it gives us more room overall. <clears throat> you know, regarding the propane uh, cooktop, we're still using the propane camp stove and we're waiting for the cooktop to get here to install it. But propane would have not, would not have been my first choice because I want to live totally off grid and not have to rely on things like propane. Um, we use Buzz, our mobile solar generator, for just about everything. Buzz, and by the way, this video is brought to you by Buzz, the mobile solar <laughs> generator, who reminds you to go solar because... It's free after your initial setup. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, Buzz supplies everything we need. Right now, Buzz pumps our well water. Buzz provides the lighting, the electric lighting you see in here. Uh, Buzz charges all of our batteries, runs our computer, runs our Wi-Fi. Um, runs our freezer converted refrigerator. Yeah, that's an upcoming video. <laughs> um, and I mean, Buzz does everything for us. Uh, the one thing Buzz doesn't do for us is provide heat for cooking. The plan is to go totally solar, solar powered and totally off grid in the home. But here at the Shouse, uh, it's just easier uh, for the time being to work with propane. Buzz has been a very reliable source of electricity for us and does a great job. However, if you've seen our videos where we built Buzz, you will know that when we originally tested Buzz's battery bank and things like that, those are used batteries that are supplying all of our electricity here. And while they are good used batteries, um, I don't want to drain too much off of them. I don't, I don't want to work them too hard because these batteries have to last us a couple of years while we're still building the home and supply all of our needs and also provide electricity for our construction needs, including welding and things like that. So I don't want to burden Buzz's batteries too much. The inverter is great. It's a 12 kilowatt inverter, supply three bedroom house, no problem. But it's the batteries that we need to preserve. So we're trying to be careful with that. And those, <clears throat> we had an electric uh, portable cooktop thing. It was also stolen, um, but it does take a lot more power to get that going. And uh, I just, and honestly, I like cooking with the gas better. It's quicker and mm. things like that. <clears throat> and also we would be able to, I didn't bring any of our canning stuff with us at this time, but the propane uh, cooktop will be more conducive to canning here. Um, without it, I wouldn't be able to do any canning at all, you know, for a few years, and I don't want to 
you know, go without that long. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> Buzz has worked out beautifully. Uh, couldn't ask for better performance out of something that we built ourselves, you know. Um, I think about all of the solar generators that are out there for sale, you know, three, 4,000 watt systems that they charge thousands of dollars for because they're self-contained, they're portable, you can pick them up and move them away, you know, that and a few solar panels and you're good to go. But, you know, for the 12.6 kilowatts of solar uh, power that we get off of those panels for the potential 19.2 kilowatt battery bank that we've got in Buzz, our mobile, mobile solar generator, uh, we couldn't ask for better than what we've got. And in fact, Buzz is about to power an electric hot water heater here as well, which it can do. So um, I've done the kilowatt audits on this place. We're doing fine. We just need to preserve the batteries a little better. So The bathroom, we have the tub installed. We are still working on getting the plumbing and the water in there because of the hot water heater and things. For the vanity. For the vanity yeah. and uh, getting the bathroom uh, totally watered in, <laughs> if you will. Okay, it's time to get this Shouse uh, bathroom done. I mean, because as you can see, it's so undone. And be able to take a bath in this thing. We bought this bathtub last year and we had all the stuff ready to go to uh you know get this up and running unfortunately it was all stolen so we're starting over uh the the claw feet for this tub were stolen but the tub was itself was not stolen go figure i don't know anyway we found some claw feet let me show you what we got and then i ground it down so it was a little thinner drilled a hole in it threaded the hole and now it's ready to install after Robert cleans them up how she wants to. We got our first bath in the bathtub the other day. Yeah, that was nice not having to pour water out of the swimming pool that we've been using. and Little kiddie pool we've been yeah. using for bath. So that was a nice, a, a nice upgrade, a nice amenity added. Um, the compost toilet, we were only using a bucket with a toilet lid on it. And so now we've got it enclosed the way we originally had intended for it to be used put the seat on and you know you're not falling off accidentally mm -hmm. and all that so that's a good thing <clears throat> and then uh here just yesterday we we were contacted by the uh home architect who is looking for uh slope and grade information here at the building site so robert and i went out yesterday and we uh, used a laser level and we shot the area out here uh, where the house pad is going to go. Uh, so we're out here today looking at some of the local land markers and things like that. We've got a copy of our plat and uh, we're trying to find the original monuments that were placed here and hopefully get an elevation from which to uh, begin our measurements. Let me show you what we found so far. This is a Department of Fish and Wildlife for the uh, wildlife refuge and then you know about 10 feet away from it over here is another marker because we're at the intersection of three counties here contentment is and so to this side of the marker is one county on the other side of the marker other side of a marker is another county and on the other side of this fence is another county so all three of them come together right about here and uh yeah so anyway we're hoping to get elevation i don't think we're going to get elevation today but you know we can still take our measurements yep we're explorers today we're <laughs> pike zebulon pike and company <laughs> this uh view of the wildlife refuge you don't see that i don't think we've ever shown you there's contentment right there i think you see it off in the distance but there's the mountain we're up on a bluff that sort of overlooks the refuge. And as you can see, all this is pretty well watered. Lots of waterfowl and things in here. Uh, as you can see, we've got a little laser level here. Um, I saw Pure Living for Life, another channel, use this. And uh, they seem to say good things about it. So I found a factory conditioned one. Thought we'd try it right here underneath 
the uh, laser level is the pin for one corner of our property. We're going to take 20 foot increments going this way from here to the other corner pin uh, and we're going to take a, a level measurement and record it on some graph paper. We're going to do the same thing from this corner to the other corner at the right angle over there. And, um, and then we'll, you know, spread out from there and create a little graph. We'll use these flags to sort of mark our increments uh, and do things like uh, mark our setback uh, values and things like that. So this location right here, we will, in elevation, we will just call zero. And everything from this point will either be higher or lower than this one. And then we'll, you know, we'll figure out our slope from there. We'll graph it out, figure it out. When you get a solid signal, you know you're right on the laser. Okay. Toward you. That's good. And got some elevation uh, measurements for him. And then we plotted those out on a piece of graph paper, drew some contour lines, did a little cross section showing the grade slope and percentage, and got those off to him last night. So we should have our finalized plans here pretty soon, and we can actually stake out our house pad and begin cutting as soon as Dinah, or Dinah 2, whichever, <laughs> is ready to go. You know, some people may ask, well, why are you using an architect, you know, if you're wanting to be as self-sufficient as possible and do as much of, of this work as you can? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> well mainly because we don't really have <clears throat> the time to learn software to do it ourselves and um, by getting the architect to do it for us it comes to us ready to go and it gives us time to work on other things instead of having to devote time to learn a software program lay out plans ourselves an architect obviously is more skilled at knowing the uh, of ratios to like you know the the sizes of the <clears throat> wood supports and things for the roof and the different things we're going to need for <clears throat> the straw bale and adobe house. I have never drawn up house plans before. I mean I've made sketches of things that I liked, outlines and things like that, and included measurements. But there's a lot that goes into designing a home. You need to know where to place the electrical, how to place it so that it, you know, lines with code. You need uh, cross sections of, you know, that show exactly how the roof attaches to the walls and how the foundation is built and designed. All those kinds of things. There are a lot of spatial considerations to make that I'm not skilled in. Um, you know, things like placement inside a kitchen of various things and bathroom layout. Um, if I wanted to, I could take the time to do it, but then I would also have to learn a program like SketchUp, which I've never used before, uh, to do all that. And that requires layers and layers of drawings for different kinds of things. Um, and frankly, it's just, it's better for, for us to put that kind of thing into the hands of people who do this all day, day in and day out, uh, and who have the tools and skills to be able to just put it together for us. Now, they've gotten a lot of input from us, the architect has. Um, and these plans are not costing us a lot. I mean, you, some of these natural homes, uh, you know, architects charge you tens of thousands of dollars to put together a set of plans for a custom-built sustainable home, you know, that's LEED certified and all this other stuff. You know, we found someone who does this for a living. You know, natural, sustainable homes that are LEED certified. He does it all day, every day for a living. And has, go ahead. And has, uh, some people have built some of his plans here in Colorado. And right here locally where we're at. So it was, it was a no-brainer for us to just go ahead and pay him what, what we think is a fairly modest sum uh, to give us a set of plans for a fairly modest home 
uh, here at Contentment. So we're looking forward to getting those plans. Uh, we'll, we're looking forward to breaking ground here, uh, hopefully within the next 30 days, start cutting our pad, digging in our septic, all that fun stuff, and getting at least those things done now. Maybe we'll get a chance to make some brick. So, um, so I'm going to be coming out with a couple of videos. We are one over another sun oven meal. And um, it was good, by the way, <laughs> a video over how we converted the freezer to a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I realize that our videos have not been regular. Um, I think the plan from here out would be to probably get one out one a week. And it might be a more general kind of video. I, I don't, I don't know quite what to do. Maybe we could have your input uh, as to what you would rather see. Would you rather see a video focused on one aspect uh, of the homestead, um, of our homestead existence out here, or would you rather see a video where we just sort of give you a weekly update, uh, you know, with some, with some videos sprinkled in like this one maybe, where you can see some of the things we've done this week. So would you rather have a, a topical or a general, I guess, is my question. And um, so look forward to your input on that. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for uh, the people who watch and comment on a regular basis. We really do appreciate that. And uh, We know that there are people out there who watch us who don't make a comment or don't do anything, please, if you would, I mean, if you want to remain anonymous, I, you, I guess you could set up an account with a fake name or something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, leave a comment. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, please give us a thumbs down. That helps no, us don't. No, no, no. That helps no, us. No, I don't yes. like it. My video is the only one that's had a thumbs down. <laughs> I Please. can't take that kind of drama. <laughs> uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. Either way, it's a you know, it tells us it tells us what's going on. <clears throat> and uh, hit the the bell uh, to be updated on future videos so that you can see what's going on with us and thank you for watching. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.